Welcome everyone again. Please take your seats. Um, we're starting a little bit behind schedule, but very happy to see the crowded room. So welcome. Okay, good morning, everyone. So my name's Chris Buckridge. Um, I work with the RIPE NCC. I'm also on the MAG, and I'm going to be moderating this session along with my colleague, Bruno. Um, internet fragmentation, yeah, it's, I think we've already had an awful lot of discussions about this just in the last three days, so two and a half days. Um, so I hope this is an opportunity in this main session to bring together a lot of the, the discussion and the learnings that have been happening, not just at this event, but in the lead up and in, in some of the other areas where this work's been going on. Um, as we're all aware, the Internet Governance Forum this year is structured around a number of themes which are reflecting the themes that the Secretary General of the United Nations laid out for a global digital compact. And so the idea is that the IGF community will be able to structure its input, its, its feedback and its, its knowledge in a way that will inform that global digital compact and ensure that that can be a really useful and um, effective document. So avoiding internet fragmentation is one of those themes. Um, and it's one that I think has, perhaps more than some of the others, required some deep diving, um, some digging into what does fragmentation actually mean, what do we mean when we talk about avoiding it, um, and what does that mean for the uses of the internet, for the internet itself, um, and for what the internet can actually bring to, to our societies. So in the main session here today, we have a, quite, quite a large panel, actually, um, but it, I think a panel that will bring a lot of very different, diverse perspectives and knowledge um, to do the discussion. Um, we have Amandeep Singh Gill, who is the UN Secretary General's Envoy on Technology. Uh, we have Tatiana Tropina, a professor from the University of Leiden. We have Edmund Chung, who is CEO of the Dot Asia, Dot Asia organization um, and is also a member of the ICANN board. Uh, we have Raul Echeverria, who's uh, associated with the Latin American Internet Association, ALAI. Um, Emila Gandhi is Head of Inclusivity and Policy Development at Meta. Sheetal Kumar is with Global, Policy, uh, sorry, Global Partners Digital um, and has also been one of the drivers and chairs of the Policy Network on Internet Fragmentation. What we wanted to start this session with, um, and, and not to sort of have this as the, the full take on youth, but we wanted to hear um, some youth perspectives on what internet fragmentation means to them. And we put out an open call, Bruno and myself, um, to get some short videos from youth, some of them here, but also um, a, a lot of them unable to make the journey. Um, and we would like to play that. I hope this will also inspire youth to speak up later when we have some more open discussion um, and to um, contribute. So I think we can play the video now. That would be great. Maybe. Can we? <laughs> what can the youth do to avoid internet fragmentation? Well, Firstly, to start talking with multi-stakeholder spaces about the problem, about the different kind of fragmentation, because we have seen that could be by the domain names, by the BCP, that is a border gateway protocol. If you have a high shaking route, then you have some kind of fragmentation. Then it's about the resiliency of the network. It's all about the internet infrastructure and the technical part. The fragmentation often is confused with content regulation, right? That dust is another story. So. We need to focus on what is internet fragmentation and explain all the stakeholders. When you cannot reach all the devices that are connected to the internet, when you have certain restrictions to some parts of the internet, it is because there is a internet fragmentation there. When you have two different views from two different origins to the same resource, that can be also considered a fragmentation problem. 
the area of internet fragmentation is full of frustration for us as EU, because we have to face the consequences of the decisions of governments and private actors taken without taking into account our own concerns and needs. That's why, as a youth, we see that this is the outcome of the lack of trust in the multi-stakeholder approach and the lack of cooperation between different actors in the internet ecosystem. As a youth, we believe we can be a driving force for the change, for reinforcing this belief in the multi-stakeholder approach and the ability to make the internet interoperable, global and open for all of us. Fragmentation of the internet in a country like Greece means that it would make near impossible for me to access a vast amount of information and knowledge. Subsequently, there will be less job opportunities and less direct communication out of my local community. So, biggest concerns about internet fragmentation are that information lacks of objectivity and transparency due to the fact that everything is regulated by specific authorities or entities. As a result, internet is no more democratic and united for all its users. We should have local and international initiatives with different stakeholders involved to learn when their rights of open and unrestricted internet are, are violated and how they can be involved in policy making to prevent those controls. Young people, as a generation that has benefited the most from new technologies, can showcase the benefits of an open internet and advocate for policies against internet fragmentation. I think there is a, a, some ways to prevent internet fragmentation, especially doing some international agreements, treaties, and uh, seeking that the countries will um, sign it and put it on perspective and uh, insert it on the national regulation. So there will be a um, universal role of internet fragmentation. I think youth can help by proposing, by discussing, by bringing the thematic to debate and making people know what this is. For me, internet fragmentation represents a threat to the very things that make internet this extraordinary tool. Uh, it's a threat to its open architecture, it's a threat to its interoperability, it's a threat to the flow of information which is and was responsible in a great extent to the economic advancements and the scientific advancements we witness day by day. And also, in my perception, the internet fragmentation is a consequence, a symptom of a larger process, a larger phenomena, which is the fragmentation of the global order itself, of the global powers. And uh, in this context of distrust and fragmentation, I do believe that uh, the best thing we could do to prevent it from happening is making a real effort to trying to solve this problem collectively and focus in on the things we have in common, our common vision, our common comprehension of what Internet is and what it should be, uh, and bring all the stakeholders involved uh, to the discussion in an open and honest discussion. Uh, that's why multisectoralism and multilateralism are so important. And also important is young people involved in this process. We should expose young people to this debate, explain it to them, give them the opportunity to learn what is the internet infrastructure, how it works, how it is governed, and most importantly, why it is fundamental, it's paramount to keep it an open, and safe space for everyone. Thank you. Hello. Oh yeah. <laughs> Working. We thought it would be interesting to have this first um, video on the perceptions about fragmentation from the youth as kind of this new generation, the the internet-born generation almost, and the, the the ones that are closest to our technologies and so on, but, um, and also to highlight how different the perceptions can be depending where you come from, what's your background, where's your region in the world, and even your job and what you do. So um, it's, it's really enlightening to, have to be able to hear um, those, those inputs on that. Um, but moving on to the conversation, um, 
Avoiding internet fragmentation is one of the complex um, digital issues the United Nations um, Secretary General recommends that, the, that is addressed in the Global Digital Compact. Um, so Amandip would like to, to ask you if you would be able to elaborate on how do you think fragmentation should be seen as a risk or even a focus in upcoming UN negotiations, discussions and processes. Um, and, and the idea for us is to you, um, for you to help us understand um, what is this perspective from the UN on this topic. And even this has been a question in the previous session too, so there's a huge interest in that. Thank you so much and uh, congratulations to you, Bruna and uh, Chris for flipping this session, bringing the youth voices up front. Um, and it was very instructive listening to uh, the youth perspectives. Uh, you see clearly uh, that the user experience on the internet is fragmented today. So that's a reality as we move from uh, one um, geography to another or one um, application or set of applications to another. We don't have a smooth transition. Um, uh, we get limited in the ways that we use the internet. So this user experience fragmentation is a reality. Is this, are these cracks on the top are of sufficient width or seriousness that they threaten the fundamental foundations of uh, one internet? That's really uh, the key question. And uh, the reason the SG has uh, argued for this to be included in the considerations for the Global Digital Compact is, uh, is because of the seriousness of this uh, particular uh, risk. Uh, and the fragmentation of the internet is actually the direct opposite of digital cooperation. The kind of collaboration we need across countries, so multilateral in a sense, and across domains and stakeholders, multi-stakeholder, uh, so this is the exact opposite of that. So that's the seriousness of this issue and that's why it deserves to be treated as part of the GDC uh, discussions uh, and consultations. Now, what is contributing to this fragmentation? Uh, there is, of course, uh, at the content layer, there are different views on the social and economic consequences uh, of what happens on the internet. Uh, different countries, different cultures may have different regulatory approaches, uh, whether it is uh, religious or other cultural sensibilities or particular national perceptions around data protection and privacy. Uh, so some of this is legitimate. Some of this may be done in a way which is blunt and which kind of leads to those fragmentation uh, issues. Uh, so that's one aspect of the story. The other is the economic opportunity drivers for fragmentation. It's ironic because on the one hand, the one open, free, secure, inclusive internet has delivered such tremendous economic benefits. And one of the youth participants mentioned this aspect of the opportunity. But then when you see uh, these gigantic market capital, capitalization figures, and you, some of, you, you see some of these other aspects of uh, success, uh, whether hyped or not in the, uh, in the media or otherwise, uh, there are some who consider, you know, why don't we have an equal share in the pie? Uh, and so they start to look at, you know, how do I cultivate my own digital economy? And for that, do I need to have uh, control over data or over platforms? Do I need to, like in the old days, uh, in the industrialization sector? Do I need to protect and build up my own national champion? So that's another uh, driver. And the third one is simply lack of sufficient international collaboration. People are just being left to do their own things. Lack of sufficient multi-stakeholder collaboration. And we need to work harder to address that problem in the context of the GDC and beyond. You mentioned one um, question which is like, you know, uh, self-reflection uh, for uh, the UN forums. Are we also contributing to uh, fragmentation in terms of like the governance discussion or otherwise? Uh, and frankly, one of the three pillars of my office's work is coherence. Uh, so it's as important 
uh, as the governance work, as the SDGs enabling work, uh, this is uh, how much the SG wants us to be aware of this, that different organizations across the UN system, whether they, they be engaged more on the physical networks uh, or they be engaged on the human rights implications, um, uh, uh, education, etc., are more coordinated so that uh, member states, other stakeholders uh, do not have to um, uh, be confused uh, as they deal with different aspects of the digital. Uh, and uh, we are delivering as one UN for different uh, stakeholders. And the IGF actually plays a very, very important role in those considerations around uh, coherence and coordination uh, so that we in the UN system are not contributing uh, to an already uh, difficult uh, problem. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amadi. Um, I, yeah, some really interesting reflections there. I think the idea of the tech envoy role as a strategy against fragmentation of, of governance is a really interesting perspective to put, put your office in. Um, so thank you for that. Um, we are running a hybrid session here um, in the spirit of the modern IGF, and our next um, speaker is Dr. Tatiana Trapina, who's still back in, in The Hague, I think. Um, so, Tanya, I, I'm turning to you as someone who's been involved very much in the academic um, discussion of fragmentation. I know you've um, written some, done some work recently that sort of summarized a lot of the, the other discussions that are going on. Um, the question I guess we wanted to pose to you is what's the current status and the sort of existing risks of fragmentation w looked at from that academic perspective? And, and I think also importantly, has that changed significantly in the last few years? We've seen this topic really come up in priority, come up in, in sort of focus. Has that, has that reflected changes or is that just, uh, um, well, the Secretary General perhaps bringing it onto the table? So thanks, Tanya. Be this remote diversity token. Uh, thanks for having me. So let me start with the idea that have already been floating here and has been expressed by um, by Amandeep that we are looking at fragmentation from various layers, right? Technical layer and then content layer and also infrastructure layer. And from my perspective, internet has always been fragmented, right? So it is a mesh of network self-governing autonomous systems so it has been fragmented already but it is not at the same time because connectivity remains all these systems speak the same language there is a dominance of tcp ip protocol uh, there are there are unique identifiers like domain names ip addresses and they are governed globally and this connectivity has not been challenged so in a way as long as it remains internet is not going to be fragmented uh, so everything that we thought about like five, six, ten years ago in terms of internet fragmentation, challenging, challenging this connectivity, like let's say alternative route, or a few years ago the new IP, or something else that will that will break or splinter the internet into some islands of connectivity, it did not materialize or it has not materialized yet. However, what we are seeing and why this debate is very important today is various governmental and international uh, intergovernmental organizations and initiatives tackling this global connectivity, tackling exactly this technical layer. And the dichotomy like authoritarian regimes, democratic regimes are not, is not relevant anymore. Because for example, some of the recent EU initiatives almost tackled well, thankfully, we got out of it, uh, the root zone servers. So something that is going on right now, which has not broken this connectivity yet, which hasn't challenged it to, till the end yet, can eventually result in the loss of this global connectivity. So this is one of the reasons why this debate is relevant. Now, going beyond the technical layer, and I very much like that uh, the, the term user experience fragmentation has been used here already. When I look beyond the technical layer, when I look at the content layer, at the infrastructure layer, it is not 
internet fragmentation, because as I said, the global connectivity remains, but what we see here is that again, authoritarian and democratic regimes alike are using the same tools for different reasons. Some of them for survival of their own political systems, some of them under the um, reason of protecting their citizens, restriction of information flows, restrictions of connectivities, building the borders around the national internet, treating this connectivity and the global network in some way as an extension of their sovereign soil. And in this regard, the user experience in various parts of the globe can be very, very different. Many of these restrictions are purely human rights violations, and this is why I am so uncomfortable to call them internet fragmentation, because it just diminishes the problem a bit. However, I do agree that this control and the imposition of these restrictions around the globe is a very, very dangerous trend, which at the end maybe will not challenge the global connectivity in terms of unique identifiers and how internet works, but it can significantly fragment the user experience. It can significantly um, challenge the openness and the global nature of the internet can just basically break the promise of innovation and connectivity. Ultimately, and I know that I don't have much time, internet shutdowns. Again, I would not call it fragmentation of the internet. However, this is to me purely human rights violations and they again, not even, um, not even change user experience, not even fragment user experience. They just simply do not allow users to experience the internet. Now, just bringing this all together, why we are having this now? I think that today this debate is as, as, as important as ever. And the reason for this is this appetite for digital sovereignty, uh, appetite for regulation. And we've heard here already about multi-stakeholder collaboration. I think well, what is going on right now is that we somehow lump into things, multi-stakeholder collaboration, which is very important, but also the multi-stakeholder model of governance, yeah. governance of the technical layer, which already exists. And I think a strong com commitment to this governance, um, model of governance is being significantly watered down. And if on the content and infrastructure layer, uh, these changes to user experience are reversible as long as global connectivity remains. Once we lose the technical layer, we lose internet as we know it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tatiana, um, for the input. And I think we, we, we do agree that regardless of the place that you're discussing, whether you are talking about basic human rights violation or, um, or even fragmentation, a lot of these debates that we have about this topic, they started in the infrastructure layer. And as somebody else pointed out in the previous session, um, if there is fragmentation at the infrastructure layer, there is fragmentation for everyone, basically, and for the internet as a whole. So um, moving on to the, to the infrastructure discussion, I would like to um, ask a question to Edmund Chung. Um, so how would you consider this is a concern for the DNS or either the operators community? And um, the, the second question is whether this aligns with what was um, just explained by the UN Tech Envoy. Thank you, Edmund. Yeah. Thank you, first of all, thank you for having me here. Uh, this is certainly a, a hot topic, uh, internet fragmentation. Um, so, but I, I want to start with really uh, building on what Tatiana said, what is or what is not internet fragmentation? So there are uh, different aspects of uh, user experience. Uh, diversity, for example, shouldn't be a, a fragmentation. Uh, when I go to Google, for example, here in Ethiopia, the first time I see it, it's in Ethiopian language. You know, uh, that's that's user experience and probably not uh, fragmentation. But um, uh, uh, so so I think the framework that the policy network uh, has been putting together is very useful um, to to allow us to discern what is or what is not fragmentation, and the layers of uh, fragmentation that we can talk about, uh, the technical layer, uh, the, the governance layer, the, the content or the user experience layer. Um, and and uh, other things is that you know, the internet itself is a decentralized system. The decentralization of it shouldn't be considered fragmentation. Um, you know, just for example, uh, we operate .asia, 
we have slightly different policies than .com or you know .jp uh, and for .kids, for example, that we also you know help uh, uh, operate. Um, it's very different. The policy for .kids obviously would be different from .com, right? I mean, this is a space for uh, uh, safety and protection of children and for, for, for children's rights. So um, this is, uh, I think, the risk when we really talk about it is to when we take it too far, um, you know, this concept of internet fragmentation. And one of the good examples is like uh, digital sovereignty. Uh, I think many d different governments like to talk about div uh, digital sovereignty, but when you try to apply it all the way down to the technical layer, the fundamentals of the internet, if it breaks the one internet that, that we talk about, that's a problem. That's, you know, that's when we should really be wary of those who, who, who try to break the institutions that, um, and the multi-stakeholder models that we have built you know, uh, over the years. So, you know, so uh, uh, um, to, to, to make the internet work, or just work, as, as it is right now. Um, I think reinforcing the institutions, reinforcing ICANN, participating at ICANN, participating at IETF, um, those are important aspects, you know, participating here at the Internet Governance Forum and the Internet Governance Ecosystem. I think that's the kind of thing that, that's, that's, that's important to, to the topic of the day, which is uh, to how to avoid in internet fragmentation. Um, and to, to avoid the fragmentation, I think there's, in, in terms of the technical layer, when you think about the DNS or the, you know, the fundamental layer, it's also important to continue to adopt and upgrade uh, some of the standards from, for example, moving from IPv4 to IPv6, DNS-wise, uh, DNS security, internationalized domain names, basically domain names and email addresses in your own native language. Upgrading those basic protocols is also an important part. Um, and, um, and, and finally, I, I wanted to pick up on one of the things that uh, one of the youth uh, uh, participants in the video said. It, it's really about trust. You know, if we want to avoid uh, internet fragmentation, trust is kind of the glue that keeps the internet uh, you know, whole and unfragmented. Um, if, we, if we try to introduce multiple incompatible protocols uh, and standards, if, if we try to challenge the governance of uh, the mechanisms, the institutions that we have by you know, certain local or regional legislative rulemaking, we, we kind of dissolve the glue that binds the internet that we love. And, then, and that's, that's, I think, the, the threat, and that's the um, uh, internet fragmentation threat that we need to um, you know, be, be wary about and, and, and concerned. So I guess I'll, I'll close here. There's three, three things that I really want to highlight. One is discerning what is and what isn't uh, fragmentation. Number two is um, the, the, the protocols and the standards, they get up graded, uh, get updated, and that continue to have these open standards is important. And third and most important is to avoid fragmentation, I think most in, in the technical layer, is to reinforce and come participate at ICANN, come participate at the IETF, come participate at the IGF. They're not perfect institutions. They need you know, improvement. Uh, they need to be more co cognizant of human rights. They need to be more cognizant of, of democratic uh, principles but come and participate and, and improve them. I think that's uh, one of, you know, I want to leave with, uh, in terms of avoiding internet fragmentation. Great, thank you very much, Edmund. That's, yeah, I think captured some, some very fundamental points there and, 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 well, left a lot of open questions as well, I think, which is handy for the discussion. Um, next, I wanted to throw to Raul Echeverria. Um, so Raul, you're someone who obviously has some background in the technical community, but these days, I think, is, is coming more from the sort of the industry side, the private sector, and I think bringing that private sector perspective into this discussion uh, is really fundamental. Um, so, I mean, I, I think looking to you and looking to the organizations that you're working with uh, in Latin America there, wh what are the concrete examples you're seeing where sort of technical, commercial policy measures are leading to fragmentation or, or effects that we can call fragmentation? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation to the organizers. Um, thank you for the opportunity to share the, the, the panel with such uh, distinguished colleagues here. Um, I think that we have to start saying that something that we have to state more clearly that this fragmentation is bad. It's something, this is why we want to avoid that. 
and the global reachability and the, is one of the key, key factors for the success of the, of the internet. Integrity and global reachability are the basis. And I would add also trust, as, as uh, Edmund said. And um, the problem is that when people get different responses to, to the same action on the, on the, on the internet, uh, similar, similar actions, different responses, just because they are connected to different networks uh, uh, within the same country or in different countries. So the, the trust is lost that because you cannot trust in the, in the, in the tool that you are, you are using. Um, so the, we already talked, and I think that the policy, the, the, the framework that the policy network is, is, is providing is very useful for that. We, we understand the different kind of fragmentations. Um, also, other colleagues already talked about the, the, the experience, the user experience uh, fragmentation. So let's focus uh, more on the technical aspects of the technical layers. And we, we know also that uh, inside of that category, there are different situations. There are intentional uh, fragmentations, and I think that the, uh, in, the, in the previous session we, we, um, we heard about a, a concrete uh, story about a country where it is happening. And the, so when the, the, that fragmentation is intentionally provoked, so it, it is not, it's a political issue. And I think that is aligned with what uh, Tatiana said before. This is not just a fragmentation. Uh, it's, it, we don't have to, to keep the idea that it's something that we can uh, resolve just with technical measures. It's uh, something that is in the political layer. But we have, and I, I want to focus on the other part, and the other category, that is the unintended fragmentation. And this is more than a political thing, it's a policy thing. And I, I thank to the English language that give us the opportunity to differentiate uh, between political and policy, something that in Spanish is more difficult. And, but the, so the, uh, what you ask it for concrete examples, and, uh, and we see that in, in many uh, and other colleagues already talked about the geographic uh, component and the uh, fragmentation between different geographies, but we see fragmentation also inside of the same, a single country. And why? Because policymakers are trying to, s to solve concrete specific problems and trying to look for simple solutions. And so one example could be to protect, to block or filter, uh, filtering contents because they are violating intellectual property rights or because they are considered illegal or we see examples regarding gambling or many other uh, cases. Uh, so the, we see laws and regulations that simply say to the um, uh, internet uh, service provider or to the platforms, you have to remove or you have to filter this content. But unfortunately, filtering or removing content is, is more complicated than what it seems. And so policymakers under, underestimate because uh, sometimes because, because they don't involve all the stakeholders from the beginning in the discussions. And uh, there is a, a very interesting paper from Internet Society, I think from 2018, not sure, that explain all the ways that, uh, that, uh, that existing mechanisms to filter uh, a, a content, and it explains all the risk associated to each of them. So the, this is not simple, and, and the risk, beside of course the obvious risk associated to the affecting rights, especially freedom of expression, there is a huge risk of fragmentation because different ISPs can take different actions to comply with the, with the, the same order to filter content. We are seeing now, right now, that uh, all of us are following, I guess, uh, what's happening with the World Cup. And we have seen a lot of uh, initiatives, uh, policy initiatives in different countries that are trying to protect the rights of those who have the rights uh, about the, the transmission of the of, of, of the games. And so it's the, the, the laws or regulations just say to the ISPs, you have to remove the legal streaming uh, on, on this, those games. And it leads to the problems that I, I, mentioned, uh, I mentioned before. But it could be even worse. That's, uh, there is also an example that what we know as a uh, kill switch, that is, uh, is when, what is it about? Is uh, when the, the law just say that if a, if a site 
or a company don't comply with a certain rules, it should be uh, blocked. But it ignores the evolution of the internet architecture in the last few years. So it's not that we can just delete, <laughs> block a site simply because the architecture has evolved. We have clouds, we have platforms that, uh, that host sites of other companies or other services. You cannot just block uh, Amazon.com or, or Facebook.com or something like that. It's, uh, it, so the, 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 when the kind, how the ISPs try to comply or try to, to implement resolutions like those is, is, a, is high uh, risky and this is the kind of thing that should be avoided. Thank you very much. How, um, yes, and, and I think you, you um, captured a really relevant point and, and also why we insist this is part of a, a bigger global cooperation and why this is also so, something so relevant to be um, discussed at the IGF. That is this willingness from all stakeholders to take part in all strategies and mechanisms to avoid fragmentation from happening. So now we have a question to Emil Gandhi from Meta. Um, and our question is, um, Facebook and other social media platforms, they, they play a rather complicated role in discussions about fragmentation. So how do you see um, the private sector or even um, these platforms playing um, or, or even helping prevent fragmentation from happening. Um, welcome, Emiller. Thank you for accepting the invitation. Thank you so much, Bruna. And, um, you know, thank you for inviting me and thank you for inviting Meta to be part of this conversation. Uh, and also thank you for centering uh, the youth voice. Uh, not so many panels um, uh, or workshops that I've attended uh, really put the voice of the youth at the, at the center of this conversation. So thank you for that. As my previous panelists uh, have mentioned, you know, ICTs and digital technologies when used responsibly and equitably can create opportunities for everyone, um, transforming lives uh, in communities, uh, is a formidable engine of innovation. Um, but this unique potential, as Raul and other um, panelists have um, mentioned, can only be harnessed uh, you know, if the fundamental nature of the internet as an open, interconnected, and uh, interoperable network of networks is preserved. Uh, and one of the things that one of the uh, panelists mentioned also is that um, uh, you know, we need to preserve the rights, the freedoms, uh, trust, and safety of the people uh, who are using uh, the internet. Platforms like Meta, obviously, we do have a major role to play uh, in, in avoiding um, internet fragmentation. With almost 3.5 billion users monthly, in our view, one of the most important tasks uh, we have to promote uh, an open internet are threefold. One is to make sure that human rights is centric as we develop our products, as we develop our, our policies. Secondly, uh, recognizing uh, instances where governments can play a role in defending the, an open internet. And third, promoting a multi-stakeholder and international cooperation initiatives that defend an open internet. And how do we see this play out uh, as meta? So first of all, uh, you know, as, as some of my panelists have already, fellow panelists have already mentioned is that people all over the world are increasingly exercising uh, their rights to freedom of expression, participating online. Uh, some of us are enjoying the World Cup and hoping uh, an African nation wins uh, the World Cup. Um, you know, access to information, health, education, and so much more online. But at the same time, we cannot run away from the crucial challenges. We recognize those crucial challenges. First of all, people are being siloed, or you know, people who are using our platforms or people using the internet are being siloed and limited on their ability to use our platforms to express their rights due to restrictions on, on, an, on the open internet. Secondly, uh, violations of human rights are increasingly taking place online from hate speech, bullying and harassment, to misinformation and disinformation, surveillance, and, and many other uh, things that, you know, we've been covered in other IGF uh, workshops. What have we done as a platform and, you know, to avoid uh, this fragmentation? What, what has been our approach? So we've taken several steps um, to put human rights at the center uh, of, of how we approach this work. So first of all, we've built a human rights team 
and I'm sure some of you have met, uh, you know, part, part of our human rights team, we have adopted an ambitious human rights policy, launched an oversight board, has, uh, created a human rights defender fund. We've also joined um, the UN Global Compact and recently published our first ever human rights report. Um, one of the things that we are also doing beyond all these things that we've mentioned that my team focuses on is putting stakeholder engagement at the very heart of how we develop our community standards, focusing uh, also on underrepresented and often uh, marginalized and minoritized communities who are usually at the periphery of policy uh, development uh, making processes. So those are some of the approaches that we, we, we are taking. Uh, one thing that I would also want to mention is that um, is I'm not sure if some of you were part of the opening uh, opening session and one of the things that our VP for Africa and Middle East and Turkey, uh, Kojo Boachi mentioned is that we are working also to promote efforts to expand meaningful connectivity to the internet. Uh, I, I think some of my fellow pan panelists mentioned already around, you know, like the content layer and how uh, that contributes to um, to internet fragmentation. But we must also acknowledge that, um, you know, access uh, in itself is not enough, but, you know, uh, meaningful access and meaningful use uh, of the internet, which is enabled by digital literacy, uh, you know, uh, online environments that are free from bullying and harassment, discrimination, violence, and, and others. As META, we want to be part of the solution and not really part of the problem, but we also understand uh, that we are part of an ecosystem and this needs to be a cross-functional industry-wide collaborative effort. Over to you, Bruna. Or to me. Um, th thank you very much, Emila. Um, so I mentioned at the beginning of the session that there are a lot of, um, there are a lot of activities happening already in, in the IGF space um, on this fragmentation issue. Um, and one of the complexities in, in putting this session together and in, in addressing this has been having sort of some parallel, but I think complementary work going on in the policy network um, on internet fragmentation. Um, so our next speaker is Sheetal Kumar, who's with Global Digital Partners, but is also able to speak to um, what's been happening in that policy network. There's been a lot of meetings. There was a session immediately before. Um, and just before I, I go um, to that, to, to um, Chital, I wanted to mention in the spirit of the hybrid meeting, there has actually been some really interesting discussion in the Zoom chat. Um, so if, if people are even in the room interested in jumping into the Zoom chat, there's been some discussion there. And one of the really interesting points of contention there has been a bit about that sense of fragmentation of the user experience versus fragmentation at the technical level, which I know the framework has really addressed. So um, perhaps it, if you can give us some context and on the work of the, the policy network and how it fits into this discussion, that would be great. Thanks, Chris, and thanks for having me, um, everyone. As you mentioned, I, I'm one of the co-facilitators along with Bruna of the Policy Network on Internet Fragmentation. And we actually ended uh, the session just now, um, which was just prior to this one, with some questions about where does the Policy Network go next. And there was a question about, which essentially, the question was, is it, is it happening or is it about to happen? You know, fragmentation is actually happening. And I thought, I thought that was interesting because we are at a pivotal point, essentially, where we are experiencing and, and it, um, seeing a move away from an open, interconnected, and interoperable internet. Unpacking that um, and understanding what is, it, what is at stake is, of course, part of the exercise that we're, we're, we're taking part in. But there is clearly something we care about here that is under threat. Um, and now we have to do something about it. So the policy network, uh, I, think, I believe it was set up really to address these questions about what are we talking about when we talk about internet fragmentation. And when we started, we understood there was a lot of different perspectives. Um, so we had webinars, we had discussions, we had a survey to try and distill when we say internet fragmentation, what do we mean? What are people referring to? And assuming other people are referring to the same thing. Um, and what we essentially came up with was two elements of a, um, of a framework um, where most of what people were referring to fit, seemed to fit to some extent into either of these. 
And one of them is, as you mentioned, and many have mentioned, a user experience of the internet um, being fragmented. And that might mean, uh, I think Tanya, you spoke to this earlier, that the connectivity, the interoperability, the actual you know, te technical layer in, in, um, is, is functioning, is connecting, it's, it's possible to connect to it. But in practice, what people are experiencing um, as a result of, of measures um, that disrupt in information flows intentionally and, and cut them off completely, for example, is that they're not connected to an in open, interconnected, and interoperable internet. So that is a user experience element, perhaps. And then there's a technical layer. Um, we, we had a speaker earlier who spoke to some of the elements of the technical layer of the internet and the importance of protecting the public core and how if you um, undermine that, then you're undermining um, the core principles of the internet. And you mentioned, I think, Raul, about how the internet is evolving. And I think there's also a lot of questions at the, um, at the technical layer of how you continue to evolve the internet um, so that it, it remains open interconnected and interoperable. So I think there's a mix of things that are actually happening and a threat, um, and then what, what we are trying to ensure doesn't, doesn't occur. And then there's, of course, um, types of practices that perhaps are intended ultimately to control access, um, whether it's blocking content or otherwise, that can then, um, if they're pr normalized in certain ways, could impact the technical layer as well in interoperability. So those are the two elements. We're still unpacking them. We're very keen to hear feedback on them. Um, they may not be comprehensive. They, they may, you know, they, I think they need some more work. Uh, one of the comments we had was uh, the need to perhaps in each of the elements unpack what is and what isn't, for example, user experience fragmentation, what is and what isn't um, uh, technical layer fragmentation. So we can do that, um, and we really count on everyone's engagement uh, to, to support that. What we would like, um, I think another thing I need to mention is that an overarching um, comment uh, that we, we continue to have during the webinars and discussions within the policy network was that the governance of the internet, if it's not multi-stakeholder, um, doesn't maintain the, of course, the different independent actors working together, um, but but actually working together and actually collaborating, then that's a threat to the internet as well. So we do, we do have to maintain and strengthen that. So that's an overarching element, um, which speaks to the fact that whether it's policy, commercial, or other uh, measures, uh, those, those have an impact um, um, on the internet. So that, I think, um, hopefully summarizes where we have got to with the policy network. But I think I should also mention that we have got there uh, over the past few months, and we intend to work on um, building on what we have and with a, a more common understanding of what the issue is, uh, provide and support um, solutions or recommendations to the global community um, to avoid internet fragmentation and to support and to defend an open um, internet um, which as I think as you said, I mean, we, we all love, I think it's, it's, you know, it's not overly emotional to say that. So it's an important conversation. Um, and I, 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 again, encourage people to get involved with the policy network um, to continue it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tom. Um, I would just like to give the chance for other panelists if you want to add something else to what has been said so far. And, and if so, you can take the floor, Edmund and, and Amandi. Yeah, I just want to add, because uh, uh, as Raul was, and, uh, uh, was talking about World Cup, I think it, one interesting thing is that, you know, um, it's important that when I am here in Ethiopia, when I open my app to my TV, it doesn't necessarily work, I mean, because of the license and thing. But, and so, and I think that is not an, a, a, a fragmentation. But uh, what I do is I VPN back to my office, and then I can watch the TV. But if I cannot do that consistently, that would be a fragmentation, right? I mean, if I cannot consistently VPN back to my office and actually do that, that would be a fragmentation. But the fact that I couldn't do it just without the VPN is not fragmentation. I think it's important. Thanks, Edmund. Amundi? Yeah, I think in, in my previous remarks, I didn't go into what should be done uh, to avoid internet fragmentation. I was saving it up for the second round. I think. One thing is very clear from the previous interventions, we need to keep this under watch. So whether it is you know, the consistency of certain 
fragmented experiences or other indicators of potential fragmentation, the work that Sheetal mentioned, you know, that needs to be done on a continuous basis so that we have early warning signs and we can take uh, preventive action. Uh, the other aspect is the uh, technical layer. You know, we've had a couple of close calls, uh, but wisdom prevailed and uh, there was flexibility, particularly from uh, the governance institutions. We've had the INR transition and other uh, points where you know, we kind of tidied over that. So I think reinforcing trust in the multi-stakeholder governance of the technical layer on a continued basis, that's the second important uh, aspect of our uh, work uh, going uh, forward. And the third one is essentially when it comes to uh, the policy area, uh, the governance area, I mean, uh, many of you might have uh, read about in the three internets, four internets, that, you know, Dame Wendy Hall and Kiran O'Hara's book. So uh, maybe it's caricaturized, but I think we need greater collaboration across uh, the uh, uh, major jurisdictions that are legislating on uh, the digital domain, uh, whether it's the European Union, the United States, uh, China, India, Brazil, uh, in the African Union. So I think that aspect of digital cooperation, that needs to be facilitated, and it cannot be left only to bilateral channels. Yes, there is the TTC between the US and EU, there are many other channels, but there are aspects that are of interest to the wider global community, and that's where I think the value add in terms of the Global Digital Compact lies. Yeah, thank you very much, Amadeep. I, we are going to throw to the floor, so, I, I, and just before we do it, and I, sorry, I am taking note, I, I wanted to ask, I, I think Amadeep took us into that space that I, I, this, this panel, this session, I think should move towards, which is, w yeah, what are the measures that we can actually do practically, um, particularly looking towards, towards the Global Digital Compact? Um, I, so I don't know I, if other speakers here or online, I'm looking at um, Tanya and Emila, um, but maybe we, we'll throw the floor and if, if people come up with ideas uh, they would like to comment, then that's fine too. Um, so the gentleman in the front row. Please um, just introduce yourself and speak loudly. Can we correct the sound? Oh, okay. So uh, hello, uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk. My name is Timothy, I'm from Russia. Earlier today we have talked about different definitions of fragmentation. Well, I may, I may have a nice example how I face internet fragmentation basically every day. Somebody said that the end result of internet fragmentation is when end users like me can't reach internet services or are limited to use them. Well, nowadays, the, uh, my country, 140 million people can't use abroad services for just one simple reason. We can't pay for them. Because United States, you know that's uh, very good, imposes sanctions resulting in Visa and MasterCard payment systems cut off Russia. Why these sanctions led to such a consequences? Because turns out key backbone services, such as payment systems, are historically concentrated in the United States and much more important, are not protected from political interference. I think vulnerability of such big bond services to a political interference is a root cause for global problems of fragmentation. So my question is to all the panelists, what can we as IGF, as United Nations do to change that? Thank you so much. Thank you for your question. Um, we're gonna take a, 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 s a series of Three or four, yeah. And then we're gonna drive back to the panel. I see young head. I also see you here, and there is um yeah. So maybe we can go with young head and then here. You want to um, Thank you very much. Bruna, um Henriette Esterhuisen here, um, Association um, for Communication, oh. for progressive communication. Um, thanks for a really good panel and also for the work of the policy network. I think it's very helpful. Um I just want to emphasize two things that I think the panel said and then ask a question. I, I, I really want to emphasize what Chital said about normalizing fragmentation at the level of user experience, actually risking um, technical fragmentation like seeping in. You know, I, of 
course, we acknowledge there isn't technical fragmentation right now, um, but I think we should never underestimate the power of policies as well as experience to trickle down and actually affect what happens at the technical level. Innovation does not always bring good things. Um, and then I think secondly, you know, the risk, I think, of denying that fragmentation of, of the user experience is so important. And I think particularly access inequality. Um, and it's because access inequality is a threat to an open, interconnected internet. And I think if we normalize that, or if we underplay the importance of access inequality, we'll simply never really get to a point where we can effectively benefit from the internet. So I don't want to trivialize uh, technical uh, fragmentation. I know it's different and I know it's important, but I think I, I urge the techie community in particular to look at the reality and the real risks that are happening now and in the future from, from user experience. And then the question, which is also, I think, my proposal, what I think is extremely important and I see how effective it can be, is collaboration between the technical and um, coordination layers and public policy actors. I think Amandine, uh, Amandeep also talked about how to endorse that, that cooperative, collaborative technical coordination. So what I want to ask um, um, the, the, the panelists is to reflect on how would you assess the state of collaboration between the technical coordination, um, the IAB, the IETF, ICANN, Internet Society, et cetera, the NROs, all the technical organizations and their collaboration and integration and, and collaboration with those that deal with public policy, other content, et cetera, human rights, and vice versa. Thank you, Henriette. Um, the next hand was here, right? Yes. Hi, everyone, uh, dear friends, all participants, and many thanks to panelists for insightful um, presentations. Um, actually, uh, I would like to add that for inclusive international governance uh, of internet and avoiding uh, fragmentation, uh, we need uh, close cooperation among uh, the developed and developing countries. Unfortunately, unilateral coercive measures as well as restrictive and blocking measures against some countries and their digital products make it impossible to reach the requested international co cooperation. For having meaningful solidarity and cooperation as uh, recommended in the UN documents, such as uh, digital cooperation and our common agenda, uh, conducive and enabling international environments on impeded transfer of, of advanced technologies and ICT capacity building at international level are necessary. Uh, so my uh, question uh, goes to uh, Mr. Uh, Gill uh, as a tech envoy of the United uh, Nations uh, General uh, Secretary General. Uh, what they, uh, what uh, his team uh, want uh, to do for uh, this uh, kind of uh, problem? Thank you. Thank you so much. And the last question was? I, can, yeah, I think it's Mr. Um, um, yeah, uh, it, up the back there, please. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the, for the, um, for my intervention. I'm going to speak in French, please. Je suis uh, Monsieur Daronco Giuseppe Rennes, staff des Nations Unies. Et je voudrais apporter une contribution, également une question au panel. On a vu effectivement, quand on parle de la gouvernance Internet par rapport à la fragmentation, il y a le volet politique qu'on est en train de voir, qui fait quoi, qui argumente, qui légifère en cas d'un pays, etc. Mais il y a également le volet commercial. Et le volet commercial de la fragmentation, je pense notamment aux GAFA. Les GAFA aujourd'hui, euh, ils sont indépendants, ils n'obéissent pas à des règles, j'allais dire, euh, très, 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 très fines, 
Et si on prend l'exemple d'un des GAFA qui installe aujourd'hui sa propre fibre optique, qui installe ses câbles sous-marins, et avec ses propres protocoles de communication, donc qui échappe complètement à une normalisation, à une législation, et tout ça, bien évidemment, dans un but mercantile commercial, puisque c'est le but des GAFA. Alors, par rapport à cela, comment euh, l'Internet Forum Governance peut, je veux dire, avoir une influence, ou bien rappeler aux GAFA bah, que l'Internet, c'est un monde globalisé, et euh, éviter cette fragmentation commerciale, qu'on appelle également la plateformarisation de l'Internet, qui, aujourd'hui, commence par un des GAFA, mais demain, peut effectivement faire des émules et des petits, et voir une fragmentation, cette fois-ci, commerciale, et comme Internet, on le sait très bien aujourd'hui, outre l'aspect politique, ben, c'est pratiquement que du business. Donc, j'aimerais savoir comment réguler cet aspect et être très vigilant puisque l'Internet de demain, dans 5 ans, dans 10 ans, je pense que n'importe qui dans la salle ne pourra dire ce que ce sera. Sinon, on n'en serait pas là. Merci. Thank you so much. Um, can we, yep, we can take some answers um, if you would like to answer. Can we do this? Hello, may I jump in? Oh yeah, I, I, there was a last question from the, from the chat as well, I think. Probably it's the person that opened the mic. Um. Hello, could I jump in? Yes, please. Uh, thank you very much for giving me the floor. Uh, can you hear me well? Uh, can you hear me well? Yes, yes. Yes, we can. Uh, hello, everyone, and uh, distinguished panelists. Uh, I'm Amir Mokhatri from Iranian Academy Community. I would like to talk about main reasons for internet fragmentation. Uh, I think that the main reasons in this regard are uh, four reasons. The first reason is lack of respect for national sovereignty and values of all countries and sovereign equality in uh, cyberspace governance. The second reason is increase in trends of cyber threats like cyber attacks internet weaponization and internet militarization and the growing use of internet for illegitimate, uh, illegitimate uh, geopolitical goals. Uh, the third reason, I think, is unilateral coercive measures, UCM, in digital environment at all layers. The fourth reason is non-cooperation and non-cooperation of global digital platforms with law enforcement of other countries regarding illegal content, like incitement to in, like content related to incitement to violence and organized disinformation campaign, and lack of cooperation in preventing and combating cybercrime. My suggestion to solve these issues are, one, uh, development of international legally binding agreements on internet government stands based on uh, international law. For example, international treaty on data sovereignty. Second suggestion is establishment of global framework rules and norms on responsible and accountable behaviors of global digital platforms and service providers. Third suggestion is defining internet as a peaceful and development-oriented environment for public good through signing a global declaration by all member states. Uh, defining the nature of Internet as a peaceful only environment, not as a new battlefield, as defined in uh, some countries' doctrine and strategic documents, uh, could be lead to Internet fragmentation. My question to all dear panelists, especially Mr. Deep, uh, is that what would be the contribution of global digital compacts to address these critical issues and implementation of this, uh, this solution? Uh, uh, how is this digital uh, uh, global compact going to address these uh, critical issues like uh, national sovereignty, uh, cyber threat, and internet uh, weaponization and militarization, UCM, and non cooperation of digital platforms. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to raise my question. Thank you. Thank you so much for your question. We have the last one here in the middle, so.
Thank you very much, Bruna, and uh, thank you very much for the panelists. And uh, we uh, particularly appreciate um, also uh, following the, the comment by the uh, tech envoy, uh, how uh, our youth was empowered. And um, I'm from the Brazilian Minister of Foreign Affairs, and I was very uh, happy to hear that um, the Brazilian representative from the youth uh, also sees uh, some of the key drivers of the internet fragmentation, uh, the fragmentation of uh, a global uh, cooperation as well, uh, which is one aspect that uh, we see as posing uh, systemic risks uh, for us. And um, my question would ver be very much related also to the um, uh, relationship between internet fragmentation on the one hand and digital divide on the other. Uh, we have a situation that uh, until we address digital divide, we are going to have uh, a fragmented internet. We are going to have a fragmented human family. Uh, so my question would be, how would we uh, uh, move forward uh, in uh, going beyond the model, uh, the, the model that we have now is actually of a self-empowerment Thank you, Bruno. <laughs> Thank you, Tulio. Um, we, we have about 15 minutes left. I think it was really valuable and useful to hear all of those comments from the floor. So thank you very much and, um, and for the questions as well. I want to ask our panelists if we can maybe go back through in reverse order um, and give you all a chance to quite briefly um, maybe make some final comments. And I think uh, obviously some questions specifically from the floor, but again also coming back understanding that the, the IGF is working towards what can be some messages to output towards those working on the Global Digital Compact, if you can maybe consider some reflections on that. Um, so, Shital, mm -hmm. perhaps. Thank you. Um, there are lots of great questions, so thank you for those. I, I wanted to answer two, perhaps, um, uh, maybe connected, uh, and then maybe offer some reflections more generally. So, Henriette's question about uh, the engagement of different uh, communities and spaces where decisions are being made that have an impact um, on others, um, and how much, um, for example, other stakeholders apart from the technical community are involved in certain spaces uh, and, and vice versa. Um, it seems to me that there are certain actors, perhaps those are more the commercial ones or those with resources who are engaged in, in, in a, in a, in a cross-section of, of um, the policy um, and, and standards and, and other uh, decision-making spaces that have an impact um, on, on the internet, but others are not so involved. So I think there does need to be a much greater understanding um, of the different communities, the work and the, and the impacts. Um, of each other's decisions. Um, certainly civil society may be less well resourced, um, but, but I, I believe it needs to understand the public interest impact, um, and, and so do policymakers of decisions made where they may not always be present. Um, so there's that. Um, and then I think you mentioned um, how um, those with larger resources uh, may be able to shape discussions in certain areas um, more so than others. And again, that's a, a call and a plea for everyone to, to be more involved, I think, um, in understanding those implications, um, especially from a fragmentation perspective, um, and how, whether inadvertently or deliberately, um, uh, it's, it's decisions can be made that result in a less open, less interoperable, less connected internet. Um, and understanding those ramifications, understanding uh, how and why that's happening, I think is really key. And it's not necessarily happening at the moment. Uh, so certainly more discussions like this and, and more specific 
and nuanced ones need to happen. I think it's great that we're bringing this discussion here. Uh, so um, I will stop there and let the other panelists intervene. Thank you. It's not working. <laughs> um, uh, Emma, can I turn to you for some closing reflections? Yes, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Oh, thank you so much. I'll, I'll just uh, briefly uh, and thank you all to all for the for the questions. I think um, I'll go to Henriette's uh, question and some uh, others uh, on collaboration and cooperation. I think it's it's necessary. Cooperation is necessary. Collaboration is necessary. Is it going well? Um, I think there's room for improvement. Uh, and as Chital says, there are um, you know some stakeholders who are you know, involved in others who are not really involved. And I think some of, you know, the conversations that we've had here show that they still need for uh, for more deeper dialogue uh, as well. So cooperation is necessary, but I, I think um, action uh, or follow-up action is impossible without really understanding uh, the issues at, at hand. So for policymakers, for fellow industry, industry industries as well, I think there is a need for us to understand the internet ecosystem, particularly for policymakers, governance, internet governance processes uh, or principles and agreements offer us a good starting point point uh, and the IGF, for example, uh, even the uh, Internet Fragmentation Policy Network Forum give us uh, a good starting point for, for dialogue. But I think the key uh, is how do we take those conversations forward? How do we bridge the policy silos uh, and ground the input and the expertise of all stakeholders, including us, private sector, the business, civil society, and also the technical community? Thank you. Thanks very much, Emma. Um, we'll continue in our reverse order here. Uh, Raul, would you like to have some final comments? Thank you. Um, yes, I, I think that's that um, um, speaking um, is again about the, an intended, the fragmentation as an intended consequence of, of legislation or, or regulation. I think that, uh, that we need to do a couple of things. One is to go deeper, I think, the policy the policy network is a, is a very good instrument to continue discussing and going deeper on, um, on showing uh, what is a fragmentation, how fragmentation is caused, and to provide materials that can be used by, by policy makers. Uh, we need to, really to, com to uh, continue working on convincing policy makers that they need to involve all stakeholders from the inception of the discussions on, the, on, on policies in order to, to be alerted about the consequences of uh, some ideas that seem to be good, but, uh, but sometimes uh, have uh, other, uh, other consequences that are not uh, those that they are looking for. And, and, but for that, we also need to develop trust among stakeholders. And I think that uh, uh, mechanisms like IGF are crucial for that. And we need also better or more clear uh, ask to um, uh, policymakers at the local level, at the national level, to to trust in in, in multi-stakeholder mechanisms. And the, I think that that we have not uh, progressed as, as much as we should in that uh, in that sense. We have a lot of mechanisms, multi-stakeholder mechanisms, international at the international level, regional and global, but not enough. Uh, real empowered mechanisms at the uh, at the national level. We need much more of uh, of that, and we need to work with those uh, uh, policymakers. And uh, responding what uh, Henriette uh, asked about uh, the cooperation within the the technical community as an observer now, but as a former <laughs> uh, active member of the the technical community, I think that the cooperation and collaboration is very good. At that sense, I think that that we need. Um, that the technical community participate more in the in policy discussions that sometimes they, they perceive as uh, out of the, their scope, uh, but they have to be there in order just to, to provide the, the technical view and the te technical perspective in the, in the policy discussions. I would hope that the technical community participate more in those, uh, in those processes. But, uh, and the policy network, of course, is an, an, a great instrument to to increase cooperation. Thank you. Thank you for that, Raul. I think if we had a, 
a word cloud of the discussions here today, trust would definitely be a prominent word there. So it's interesting to hear, hear that from so many different speakers. Um, Edmund, some closing reflections and answers to questions? Yes. Uh, well, thank you for all the thought-provoking, really, uh, questions. Uh, and I wanted to pick up on a couple of things also from Henriette that, that raised uh, the topic of uh, access inequality. I think it's very interesting, um, you know, again, back to a kind of a theme that I, I'm bringing up is the, what is or what is not uh, uh, fragmentation. Um, if you just talk about the digital divide issue, obviously that shouldn't be considered a, 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 a internet fragmentation issue. But in terms of access inequality, um, uh, if you, you know, the overlap becomes when issues like uh, zero rating, uh, you know, for, for example, providers that, that um, give you free internet but only on their platform. Now, now that is a kind of uh, a fragmentation. These type of walled gardens, I think, would be you know, a kind of uh, a fragmentation in terms of user experience. Another thing that you know, uh, I think is, is very important uh, uh, and, and from, the, from this session is, I guess, both uh, Henriette and uh, Amandeep has uh, emphasized that the, the, the fragmentation at a higher layer, um, if the gap gets you know, uh, uh, sufficiently wide, could uh, uh, ultimately affect the, the, the technical layer as well. I think that is something that uh, we really need to take to heart. Uh, and in response to Andrea's question uh, and uh, adding to what Raul has said, uh, in some ways, I think the technical community um, uh, really cannot take things for, they have kind of taken things for granted for some, some time in terms of the governance, but we cannot take it for granted anymore. That's why I'm here. I'm hoping more of the ICANN community could be here talking about the, these, these issues, um, also from Internet Society, from the ITF, and other parts of the technical community to come here and, and, and participate. On the reverse also, I think part of it, you know, again, my second theme of, of the day, the other part is, you know, for, for this community to participate at ICANN, for this community to participate at the technical communities because those are also uh, quite open and, and multi-stakeholder. Um, and, and last point I wanna make in terms of the uh, Global digital, uh, digital Compact is really important is I think the reinforcement of the multi-stakeholder model, not only reinforcement of the multi-stakeholder model itself, but also the institutions uh, that are you know, leading the way for these multi-stakeholder model uh, 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 cooperation like ICANN, like IETF, like the different regional registries, uh, regional internet registries, and, and making sure, you know, I mean, having, it, they, they rein, reinforcing their uh, and trusting their uh, work in the Global Digital Compact will be very important. But of course, it's not just the, uh, you know, whatever you write in that, I'm not saying that it's just a piece of paper. It's a very important piece of paper into the future. But even more important than that is, is probably the participation, the continued participation. And the technical community, I think, was very active in, in the early days, um, I guess 17 years ago or, or more, 20 years ago, was very active. And that uh, set us on the path of the IGF and set us on the path of this multi-stakeholder model. I think the technical community needs to come back again uh, and, and be more active. Um, and the participation uh, both here at ICANN, at IETF, I think that ultimately is uh, the way to avoid internet fragmentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Edwin. Um, we might just throw to Tanya Trofina online as our second last um, uh, contributor here. So uh, Tanya, if you, any final comments? Uh, thank you very much, Chris. And I, I wrote four pages of, 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 of various notes, but I will try to be brief. I think what we could see or, or hear during this session round of questions is how diverse the issue of fragmentation is, how it pertains on different layers and, and, and different issues. And what I always fi find fascinating and frustrating at the same time in these discussions of internet fragmentation is that we rarely move to what can actually be done, we always challenge each other at the understanding of fragmentation. Is commercial practices fragmentation? Is technical layer fragmentation? Is internet fragmented? Instead of actually talking what should be done. So I'm happy, I, I will happily move based on these questions and maybe also corresp corresponding to what Edmund said in terms of what can be done. And I think from this diversity of issue where fragmentation um, can be considered. I think that we are always focusing on what can be done in relation to the internet, right? 
but I think that there are, let me put it like this, the states have not, many of the states have not formally committed to the multi-stakeholder governance, many of the states have no, never formally committed to the multi-stakeholder internet and fragmented internet, there are other instruments. Many of the states committed to human rights, many of the states committed to equality, many of the states committed to uh, development. And some instruments can be used to address many of these issues that, that have been called fragmentation at this session. Where I would like to put the emphasis here is what Edmund said, the technical layer, the multi-stakeholder governance on the technical layer. Let's remember that no government and no international organization imposed this technical layer. Community implemented these standards. Community is using these unique identifiers because community put trust in it, right? My, 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 my word to word cloud would be trust as well. So we have to understand that we have to untangle this issue of fragmentation, get out of this mire of discussion of, of what fragmentation is and understand. And I will go back to my first intervention. Once you lose the technical layer, everything is lost. And technical layer is not only some identifiers or protocols, they are the model of governance. And here I very much agree with Edmund. Uh, I participate in the, in the technical community actively, especially at ICANN. ICANN has narrow technical mission, but I think that technical community, while having a narrow technical mission, has to go outside of its ivory, ivory tower and explain to policymakers that firm commitment to this governance is important. Because once you break this model, you break the trust, and then this is where you will lose um, the global, open, interoperable, stable internet. Thank you. Thanks very much, Tanya. Um, so I'm going to be turning to you for some closing comments. An awful lot to digest there and some questions from the floor about the role of the UN as well. So, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. J'aimerais d'abord uh, répondre à la question uh, de notre ami uh, français. The commercial actors uh, on digital have to assume their own responsibility uh, for preventing internet fragmentation. So what you described, uh, uh, you know, you mentioned some of the big platforms. I think sometimes they don't realize how powerful they are and uh, what their actions can do globally. So I think uh, we need a greater recognition of uh, that fact and we need a greater assumption of responsibility uh, by uh, that part of the multi-stakeholder community in uh, preventing internet fragmentation because in the end it'll impact them all uh, negatively. Uh, and also this diversity aspect, they need to recognize that if the innovation system is deprived of diversity, then our future is at stake. So uh, that's uh, uh, perhaps a partial answer to your question. Um, there were um, questions around some of the political issues of, of the day. Uh, I think uh, those cracks at the top, uh, if we are not careful, they can spread to the foundation. You know, uh, Edmund and I have mentioned that. Uh, so uh, I think some things did not happen, uh, which we should be grateful for, uh, that, you know, there was uh, this... Uh, debate around uh, a top level domain, uh, whether access should be restricted. Those are the kind of things that take us down into very dangerous uh, territory. So I'm glad that we didn't go down uh, that path. Uh, and you know, these other issues, they have a kind of a dynamic. Uh, so I, you know, it's a chicken and egg situation sometime. Uh, some of the uh, like digital sovereignty type of responses, know, whether there are response or something else. So again, we have to be careful that that dynamic is not pushed beyond a point where again, fragmentation uh, gets um, uh, pushed along. As dostane irani ha, tashakur mi kunam, swalhaye shoma keli jale budan. The questions from our Iranian colleagues, uh, I think, um, valuable perspectives, you asked me how they'll be reflected in the discussion on the Global Digital Compact. So all UN member states would be participating in those discussions. So each and every one will have an opportunity to 
uh, state their, uh, their point of view, to participate in that discussion and contribute uh, to what is uh, uh, proposed to be a truly global uh, document. And I hope that it ends up addressing uh, the issues that have been raised in today's discussion. Very, very interesting, very, very valuable. And so thank you to you for putting it together in such a uh, nice way. Thank you so much, Amandit, and, and thanks everyone for the very available inputs and the questions as well. Um, this is far from being um, the end of these discussions on fragmentation. There's a lot to unpack. There's a lot of like qualifications to make to this debate as well, whether we're just talking about things like jurisdiction or just the infrastructure layer. But like one of the things we keep on hearing throughout the session was um, some issues around trust. But also I would also add these um, reinforced um, commitments over the multi-stakeholder process around the IGF and, and so, so many of the things that made the internet what it is today. So um, I would just like to thank everyone for attending this session. And if you, um, I think like our plan for the session as well is it's just to reinforce that the consultation for the Global Digital Compact is open until the beginning of next year. And, and since this is a, one of the key um, topics in the discussions, um, please make sure to send in your contributions as well. So thanks all and have a good lunch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.